Yo, it's your boy Shadow, what's good? And you're watching Take Flight. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy Wings at 24 Karat Kev. Hello. And you're tapped into the Take Flight podcast, bro. Today, this guy don't need no introduction, bro. He's been doing his thing for a long damn time. Yeah, I need an introduction. I've got no dreads anymore, bro. Boom, all right. <laughs> boy lost his dreads. It's still show. 6K in the building. What's good, Shadow? Woo! Come on, bro. Come on, Shadow Come in on. the building. Pipe it up. Yeah, bro. Actually, what the hell happened to the dreads? Huh? Let's start um, with that. They got too long. Um, first of all, Rasta still lives in me. Come on. So let's, let's just not get that twisted like the dreads were, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Um, but yeah, no, they just got too heavy, a lot annoying, and I wanted to feel like a, an Australian summer with long, without long hair. Um, it gets hot, bro, in Perth, like 40 degrees in peak, you know? And also going to the beach, bro, swimming, this shit takes like fucking long time to dry, bro, catching waves and it's pulling you back and shit. So um, I was going to trim them. And then, um, yeah, I just thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll just cut him off, man. And then, yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel. Bro, great, you look bro. fresh ass, Thank bro. You, I appreciate you know, it. Were you appreciate scared it. that you were gonna look like a flop? Nah, so not. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, bro. Cheers, <laughs> G. Like, you've to- <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've had God. it for so long. No, no, no. So was- what I was scared of, bro, was fucking. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Just put me on the flop straight away. <laughs> no, what I was scared was, bro, was fucking, um, cause they were getting, that was another thing. I was like, I never got them retwisted. They okay. were just, they were just growing and I kept them clean. But then the regrowth started again. I was like, I had an Afro on mm-hmm. top of the dreads, you know? So um, yeah, I was just like, fuck it. When I cut it, I was scared that all the frail hairs was gonna be like, oh fucking, mm-hmm. I was gonna look real like mangy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm saying. yeah, when the barber hit it, it's, it, it immediately started waving itself. So I was like, Pfft. come on. We fresh. out of here, cuz, we, we, we living, we living. So I'm chilling. <laughs> fresh, bro. But I reckon I'll probably ride them back again. Yeah. Like, a little bit shorter, but this time keep them short. See like, how like you 50, feel after this days. summer, bro. You yeah, might be like, yeah. oh, never yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow's long hair coming soon. Come come on. Coming back. soon. Come You've on. heard it here exclusive. Look, on top of being out here for obviously, take flight, let's go. You pump and the Unknown T Tour. Yes, sir. You pumped a bit of something on Mixtape Madness, bro. Yes, sir. Can you tell us a bit about what you got in store for both of those guys, bro? So, um, yeah, the Unknown T Tour, shout out Unknown T, shout mm. out um, Handsome Tours who got, on invo- got us involved. Um, so, yeah, that was, we hit them up six months ago, actually, <laughs> and they replied straight away um, saying that they were interested for the whole run with the NZ Tour. Um, and then, yeah, like maybe... Three months later, I still hadn't had no reply or anything. So I thought, oh, fuck it, lost it. All good, no stress at all. We'll try for the next thing. Um, and then, yeah, bro, three weeks ago, they were just like, yo, hit up Vinko, the manager, and was just like, yo, we want Shadow for the Australian run. And then, yeah, that's when I was like, go time, like, real go time. And I had some practice sets in beforehand. So I did um, 60 show. Mm-hmm. I've done Bliss and SO show sold out as well. And then the Posse Shot show as well. And yeah, all been fucking crazy. But um, every show as well that I've been doing, there's a lot of unreleased shit mm-hmm. and just testing songs. But so yeah, everyone that comes to these shows, I fucking like, he's in for a big trip. It's like a big old listening party. Yeah, for yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's a test. Um, and I've never done that before. I've never tested them to a crowd. Mm-hmm. So yeah, done that. Um, shot a massive video for the first single of the EP that's going to come out hopefully start of next year with Slippin' and Marcus. Shout out them. Come on, mm. Slippin'. Um, come so, on, yeah, Marcus. Bro, I always wanted to work with those two, man. That's fucking insane. But um. This is going to be large. Like, mark my words, it's going to be very, the very large. The video itself? Yep. Sorry to yeah, yeah okay, just the, whole, the whole song project is going to be, put it this way, I'm in my crane bag again. Like, Hectic. I'm like, I feel like I'm in that stage again where I'm just very, very hungry to prove to Kansat that I'm the one. Um, so, yeah, doing that. And then, obviously, you guys hooked up the Mixtape Madness thing, which I appreciate. Oh, come on. Um, yeah, so it just lined up really well, bro. So fuck, out here, Sydney, really working this time. Um, came a little bit early to do those things. Mm-hmm. Um, Smash the mixtape madness thing. That should be out soon. Uh, two, two, two beats on that. Um, love for the UK to come in over in Australia and making the link too. That's fucking sick to see. Um, and then yeah, just now we're on take flight with the sky sessions. Let's that go, that bro. was like planned for a while now. So we were just trying to see when I'm gonna be over east to, we'll wait for to that do timing. the thing exactly. And now the time's right. So I know what's nah. coming out first, but if it hasn't come out yet, trust hectic. Trust <laughs> hectic. 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 All right. Obviously, before mixtape madness, you've been on some UK channels before. Yeah, you know, yeah. JDZ Media years back, risky roads, right? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. was it like seeing the UK's reaction to yourself at those times, bro? Because that was a, that was a little while ago now, right? Yeah. So that was 2017, 2018. So it came along with like that um, Red Bull freestyle um, over rhythm and gas, um, just a grime freestyle I did on on Facebook. And like I've told the story a few times, but like what happened was. Um, I had that story. I had that video on my Facebook for a while, mm-hmm. um, and then fucking had nothing. You know, same shit. 
took it down. Six months later, posted it again, went to sleep. And little bro over there, little maggot, <laughs> comes and wakes me up at like six o'clock in the morning, bro. And he's like shaking me. I almost flogged this cunt. <laughs> and he's like, oi, don't flop have posted your video on Facebook. And I was like, what the fuck? So um, went and asked Facebook straight away in not even 24 hours, don't flop had 150K on Facebook. Come on. So I was like, sweet. Next day, boom, SBTV post a video. And then next day, Link Up TV post a video. And then it's like wall of comedy, but it was no Australian page. It was all the UK. So it was just, but this was before Instagram, before Instagram like was when like- Facebook was yeah, the Yeah, it was go-to. Facebook was yeah. the go-to. So I was doing freestyles on Facebook every week, bro. That's like, like Curve, bro. I was just doing the same thing. Come on. Just pumping it like that. Cause people, like Nerf said on the last thing, people love seeing people rap to a camera, raw shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was doing that. And then um, that came from that. Um, Big opportunities came in where there was like some offers with DEE's label with Blocker Music. Um, I kind of fucked that up with getting on the drugs and partying. Um, and then, yeah, the us, Don't Flop actually hit me up and then they were like, oh, do you want to run another video? Because it done so well. So I was like, yeah, sick. It just like was assigned to me that I was given another shot. So then um, that time, was off the drugs and shit and then fucking run it again, did that second freestyle for them, went viral again on Facebook and then Risky Rhodes contacted me. Shout out Risky, homie, he's a G. And shout out Nan as well. Um, uh, he hit me up and he was like, yo, want to do this um, well segment at the moment. So Fracture, um, Scotty, mm-hmm. Dime and Flea were the ones who done the Australian one. And then they labeled me South African grime artist because of, that's what popped the thing off. Um, but actually I was in Australia when I did that. Um, so don't get it twisted. <laughs> um, so yeah, shout out to Fracture and stuff like for that as well. I don't even, to be honest, I don't even think the, the grime stuff didn't come like, I didn't get influenced or seen it popping from Fracture and them. Um, I actually got put onto it by a little brother. He always puts me onto the, the he's deep like, Bro, I'm not even lying. My brother was talking to Dave on Snapchat before he was fucking be like, that's very, very deep. <laughs> what like, are they talking very, about, bro? Me. He sent him the video of the um the video of the Red Bull can and Dave bigged it up. But this was like, like I said, almost 10 years ago now. And um, yeah, so where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I didn't find out from Fracture. And then where I found out was my homie Joey. Mm. Um, shout out Joey if you're watching this, bro. Shout out for you. He showed me the rhythm and gas instruments when he was like, try rap to this. So then I've wrote to that after watching some JDZ videos and stuff, learned some bars, actually stole some bars to start my shit off, you know? So I did that. <laughs> and then Marshy, the person who actually fucking the cunts were saying I stole my bars off, actually shouted me out and gave me love for it. Um, and then after that, I kicked it off. That's when I started, Fracture hit me up. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, yo, fucking doing 50-50. And yeah, if it's, no one pays for anything, you've paid your own way there. Um, if you want to come through, it's all grime. I was like, yeah, sweet. The first one, I couldn't make it because I couldn't afford it. But homie Mac Shane, he went through with bass. They killed it. And then the second time I went through with bass and then that- Craziness. Went, that's, that's, that's the chapter of that ended. Yeah, and then <clears throat> when we went to 50-50, that's what, if it wasn't there, yeah, I always say this, bro, if it wasn't for Frax, man, there would be no fucking, there would be no music industry like what it is right now. I'm telling you right now, those dudes paved the way for this new gen, 100%. He brought like, a lot together. Look, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't deep in that mm, side, I always say, bro. No, but, but you're getting you educated and that's what I appreciate. 100%, like, because bro. a lot of people don't like to get educated, they like to fucking speak about shit like that and they don't pay their dues. Mm. And that's why I love you guys, man. Like you're you actually about the scene. Thank you, bro. Um, so yeah, now nah, the Fracture hit us up. We all linked up um, the first one. And then we did the Cypher in About That, About That, which was a dope store, mm-hmm. fucking fresh store. Um, we did the Cypher in that. That's when I met Nerve, um, Wombat. Nerve didn't rap that day. Thank fuck. I always got shown up. <laughs> <laughs> um, met Wombat, Nerve. Um, a few of the other boys were there as well. Shout out Curbstorm, rest in peace. Um, and then, yeah, we just linked up from that. 50-50 was sick. I rocked up with the fucking... The gloves, the North Face jacket, like no one knew who I was, bro. And I was just in this crowd, like surfing around. Everyone knew everyone else. And then, yeah, as soon as I grabbed that mic, bro, it was, it was, I made my name That's then and there. Like thing. after the first fi- first set, it was, all right, shadows in this thing. Like wheel up after wheel up after wheel up. And trust me, the energy you get from that shit, you'll never find in any other music ever. Yeah. Ever. There's a lot of, uh, you know, rappers nowadays that we look at that have MCs as well that have been, 
had such formative moments at 50-50 and fully gassed. I know Wombat has spoken a lot about, you know, Murky beginning him up, rest in peace. 100%. Um, at 50-50 and that giving him the encouragement and the confidence to go out More. and become who he's become. You know what I mean? I remember 50-50 early days has coming out there after his car almost got impounded. Bro. And doing Samurai Sword, <laughs> Katana, you know, legendary nights of 50-50. Can we even <laughs> talk about that topic? <laughs> oh, fuck, bro. Was that, was that with, with old mate when they were driving from fucking... Yes, from Sydney. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout shit. out Trunks in the building. Yeah. <laughs> shout out old mate that did the drive. You know who you are as well. Um, but yeah, shout out Haz, man. I'm fucking, I love Haz, bro. Has, is he well? Yeah, he's good, man. Good. I think he's in Japan he's doing the hard touring. touring. Yeah, sick, sick. Uh, every Jones time I see trying him. To get him back trying to get, a, rap, trying to get, trying to get, get himself away from bro. bro. I, I, he's not, he's just left the music at the moment. Oh, he's just moshing to Japanese hardcore. It's yeah, sick. Fucking no, live your life, bro. 100%. <laughs> Come on. 100%. And then, yeah, like the 50 50 kicked it off for that. That was the first one. And then it went well. Then the second one happened, bro, and that was, yeah, I watched the documentary the other day and I almost brought a tear to my eye, bro, to see what the scene was like, torn, like, it was, it was, everyone was so fucking hungry, bro, um, and like, yeah, to just come together was nuts, so like, like Nerf said in the documentary, bro, there was sweat coming off the wall, for, it was, Melbourne got hit with a heat wave, we had grumpies to full capacity, like, it was literally let one in, let one out, it was, but cunts were still pushing through. Um, and then yeah, people had, everyone had their shirts off. It was just going nuts. But then that was the time that after the second cypher, um, chill hit everyone up. Mm. So apparently he'd already done a get body run with Talakai, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and then he hit everybody up and he was like, I'm trying to do this another run and it's called get bodied again, but I want to get everyone involved in this. So, um, I'll try to remember all the artists. <laughs> So many, bro. So many, so yeah. Many. But I'd like people. Bro, I remember I looked at the jumper the other day, and there's artists on there that didn't even fucking perform. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Insane, bro. Yeah, yeah, the first yeah, one. Yeah, the Shout first out one. Flims, but he was such a good artist too, man. Um, but yeah, like Husky, uh, me, Snow, Chill, Wombat, Nerve, um, fuck Smack, even like all the No One Network boys, the early mm. No One Network boys, like Syntax Junkies and stuff like that. They jumped on it, Scrub, yeah, mask. everyone, Mask. Triple One. Triple One, yeah, Triple One as well. I remember that, that was fucking dope. That was the first time I actually met Triple One was through the Get Body thing. So um, as you can see, that networking over East has just created something huge from that. But if it wasn't for Fracture organizing that 50-50, Chill wouldn't have come to Melbourne, Chill wouldn't have organized that get body gig with everyone there. You know what I mean? That story so, was just a full circle moment for shout out to Fracture for creating something crazy. See what man, I mean? Bro. So it's always like, it always, and I feel like when we did the Apocalypse tour, mm. it was like the least I could do to try to give back to those boys. Um, just to say like, thank you for literally the reason why I'm fucking over East doing shows, man. Like I wouldn't have a fan base if I didn't make that move, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how I started with the grime stuff. Um, and yeah. Next bro, just... There was a lot to unpack in that. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that, that, that's a heavy quickly, topic. That yeah, one, one, one little thing you did say though, everyone was so hungry at that point in time. Man, like, like, do you think you can see that hunger coming, coming back? back? Yeah, it's full circle. Like, yeah. like, no, like the Nerve Cut podcast, bro, is the exact same shit that I've been saying to everyone as well. Is everything is going full circle again? Um, mm -hmm. Last year when I dropped the blackout tape, it wasn't for anyone but myself. Um, I just wanted to prove to myself that I was an artist. I proved to everyone I could rap, bro. You know. Um, but now I've got to cater back to those fans who jumped on with Cream. So that's why this next EP is the exact same sort of stuff, but way harder, bro. So, so much harder. Um, and yeah, it's, it's Death's going full circle now. No one cares about these TikTok shit. Like I, that shit don't last. It's, it's longevity, bro. And that's why we're here for that. Um, and there's only a handful of artists I feel like that's going to do that in, in our era, in our gen. Um, that's already sentimented their name there, so... Yeah, it is definitely going full Let's circle, go. bro, which is fucking sick to see. Yeah, but also the way it's gone full circle, there's also been people who have taken steps out of just the rapping stuff to get more creative. They've brought that into the rapping stuff now. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more hectic than just bars. It's more bars and creative bars. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sick. It's fucking sick. And it needs to be, bro, like, it's, we're, we're rappers. Rap cunt, fuck me. Don't fucking come here and just talk about guns, shooting this, that rap, bro. Just say a fucking, drop a punchline. Like I'm, I'm so, I'm so like fed up with the scene thinking they've got bars when they don't. Mm -hmm. Like they actually don't, bro. Like there's no punchlines, there's no setups, there's no nothing. You know what I mean? I want that to come back and I feel like it's happening. It's happening. And those people that are doing it, that are doing the actual rapping stuff are going to start shining now. Mm. And it's going to start shining. Yeah, 100%. look, I've been saying for a little bit that the, the whole rap, rap, rap thing is on its way back, right? Oh, bro, 100%. But like, it's really like right now, everyone is popping off onto it, bro. 
You know what I mean? We just need people, like Kev says, a hundred times over, you used to just be able to get your mobile phone, wrap into it, chuck it up, and that shit will See you later. Up. We, we need that coming back, Pump. bro. You know oh, 100%. Bro. Or just come on Sky 100%. Sessions now, but you know. <laughs> no, we are. But yeah. No, nah, 100%. Time, bring the raps back, man. Like, well, it's, it's definitely happening. Um, Even just like the one takes and stuff. Like, I watched um, Mine and Nerves uh, back to back on the JDZ the other day, and they're like, stuff like that. Like, mm. people love that shit because it's just bars, you know? For sure. Um. But yeah, no, I'm definitely bringing the rap back. I don't know about any other kind, but I'm Def's coming with the bars for sure. Let's, Let's go. go. Uh, speaking about Nerve, um, you know, we had him on here talking about similar stuff, you know, the grime scene, the underground scene at the mm -hmm. time. And one thing he did mention was that he was, it was so competitive that he was really forced at a young age to step up lyrically and just, just to even be considered in the same picture. Is that bro, something that you felt as well? What do you fucking mean, bro? Like you, th you think you're the best in your city till you move out, <laughs> right? And that's, that's when I was like, fuck. When you see you went, man, like, there was no one in my city doing what I was doing, right? Like, I'm, I'm not trying to like say, say um, fucking speak myself up or anything, but there was no one in that genre that was doing what I was doing, right? So when I went to... Melbourne and seen Nerf, Wombat and Web Shells and them boys shut down a set like that. I was like, oh, okay. But my energy on a set matches cunts bars. So like when I spray on a set, like, yeah, it's, it's just a very, very different, very, very different thing, bro. Um, so it didn't make me step up my bars. It made me step up my, my confidence, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and the bars just came with that, I, I guess. And also... Yeah, it just made you also look at the ways to different like different approaches to attack stuff because when it was grime, you're trying to get wheel ups and stuff like that. So you got to go very, very hard. And I was getting really good at catching beats, watching drop flips and writing a beat really well. And that's why I feel like these beats and like the songs these days, like on drill beats, and I always say this as well, the grime rappers who have transferred onto drill beats are way better than these actual drill rappers because they actually got that flow. They can ride that beat. It gives you emotion. It gives you feeling, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, no, hundred percent. It did make fucking people step up as you would, bro. Imagine going into a job as a, as an apprentice and you see everyone that's fucking 50 like signed off doing, mm. killing it. You have to step up or else you're going to get left behind, you know? Facts. Um, and yeah, no, hundred percent deaf, deaf, mate. I step up our games and move different too. And also open up your mind to doing stuff as well. Mm. So it was, it was, it was fucking, yeah, that, that, that time in the scene was nuts, man. Yeah. Like, hundred. And one thing about the 50, 50 and the fully gassed was that you had to be able to speak live. And if, and if you couldn't, you had to get the fuck off. Brother. You know, otherwise the crowd, the crowd would force you to get <laughs> See, off. Now that's, you another, know that's another whole topic we can talk about now is, um, yeah, cool. You've got a fucking, you've got mad banger songs, but can you play it live? Like, well, that's the whole question. We were saying, you know, there's a lot of rappers, I think, especially nowadays, they've kind of seen that template from America, especially. I exactly. Think. They do the live exactly. performance thing with a lot of with backing back tracks. tracks. Not even like, they just hype their songs sometimes. Like, And I'm not even talking about Aussie artists, man. I've seen, I've been to Freddie Gibbs' show. Right, and Freddie's one of my favorite artists. And then you get to Freddie Gibbs' show, and this dude's playing half his, he plays half his songs and just backing tracks and just goes through the set. And it's like, bro, like, as an artist, I want to see you perform. Like, but that's just me. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like, yeah, you end up losing a fan base and you end up gaining a fan base from how you perform. So, and a lot of things can come from it. So, say, for example, if there's a scout there who's watching as a booking agent and they see you absolutely kill the crowd, you're going to get bookings. But if you're there fucking doing what you're doing, that, that's it for you. Like no one wants to see that. And people talk, bro. Like, well, I know I do for sure. If I see someone live and I'm not f fucking with their set, I'll talk about it 100%. Mm -hmm. I'm always talking about it. Like performance is key. I've like, seen you in the comments a few times about oh, this bro, live performance. Oh, nah, bro, yeah. But that rolling loud reason. thing, man, it has to, they have to put on some fucking like actual performance. Like shout out that official Lee dude, that little kid. Come on, I've Lee. I've been seeing some shit from him on Instagram and he looks like he's really performing well. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a lot of dudes out there. I watched the Super Ego fucking set last night, man, and Nelson from there is a fucking performer. Shout out Marley as well. We've got a lot of performers from WA as well, man, like actually put on a show. And like that's what um, every tour that I've done and every headline show has just been getting better at is like, oh, how can I make this show actually bigger and actually entertaining rather than just – rapping and rapping and rapping. So in the crowd, in, in during a set, like I'm stopping telling jokes, interacting with the crowd, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Where some of these artists aren't doing that. They're just trying to get their bag and fuck off. And that to me, does you don't care, bro. Mm -hmm. You don't care. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Speaking of live shows, we did hear something um, on your Instagram. There was some sort of stabbing or, or uh, situation. I did see a little something on there. Yeah. yeah when was so this? what happened there? Um, this was... 
two years ago now, maybe. Yeah, I think two, long ago? I think two years ago, maybe two or one, one and a half years ago. I'm not too sure, but um, what the hell happened, bro? So I was at a show for one of the homies. Shout out Treb. Um, it was his first headline show back. He was one of the first people I actually made music with. The first person I recorded my first song with. So I just went to support the homie, like just to go watch his show. Um, it was a bit of a posse shot sort of crowd, like fucking riders packed, you know. So um, when you're in that sort of scene, there's a little bit of dramas here and there, a little bit of egos as well. Um, and yeah, I just noticed that um, one of the homies was getting bullied. I got told that one of the homies was getting bullied. And then I walked out after the show was finished and then I noticed the bully bullying some cunt. So I walked up and I was just like, bro, break it up. Um, this is the reason why we don't have gigs in Perth because people are getting that one punch thing and, mm. you know, and then he's just come towards me. I'm not going to lie, I had a few drinks. So I was fucking, I was, I was on one. So I've tapped him up a little bit. Thought we got into a little scuffle and then my mate pushes me off and he's like, you got to go to the hospital. Kind of. I'm like, move, cunt, like move out my fucking way. And then he's like, look down. When I looked down, I was wearing a plain white tan and just full red, like full red. And yeah, I think it was a little bit scary when um he realised that I didn't give a fuck and I just looked him straight in the eyes and said, I'm going to kill you, cunt. And then, yeah, some shit went down after that um, and fucking, yeah. All good. He didn't snitch. I didn't snitch. So I respect him for that. We've all went our separate ways. All good. Um, How'd you heal up after it? G. All, all good. good. Yeah, G. Sweet. Didn't go deep enough. Spilling. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's very. This is one thing that I don't talk about, bro. Is the trauma after. Mm -hmm. So like, I could watch fucking gory videos all day. I can't watch cunts get stabbed now. Eh? Like it's just like makes you feel a bit weird. True. Um, yeah, it's just a very very yeah. Weird trauma after. No one really talks about that after. It's like fucking you always think about like, fuck, I could have lost my life that night, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, it's good to see you all right, oh, no, yeah, no, we're all, we're, I'm all right. Like fucking I don't hold any against, anything against him either, you know. Like that's, that's, that's how it is. Like fucking it's, it's, it's not the, the game but it's the streets, bro. Like people, some people are about it. Some people will have a fair crack. Some people would fuck you. Can't, I'll blade you right now instead. You're back in my country. There's no such thing as blades. You'll get shot in your head straight away. Mm. Um, so, yeah, no, I was very lucky. And also I felt like it was a sign that I'm here for something. You know what I mean? So that's why blackout went a bit harder. Um, and, yeah, no, I'm still, I'm still, still going hard. Gave some more purpose up. to everything you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it gave a lot more purpose to everything I was doing. Um, and I could rap about it, bro. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it just gave a lot more purpose about it. Um, and then, yeah, fucking, yeah, I got I got pulled up at the Posse Shot show by one of his mates. Um, it was like, what was that bar about? Fucking hit him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with something and he's sleeping. And I was like, well, fuck, you know, th that's the thing. And like, he stabbed me. What the fuck? And he's like, I respect that. I was like, oh, good, man. Like, it's not, I'm not a person to hold grudges. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're mad at me, you're mad at me, bro. But like, Keep the same energy face to face. That's the main thing. I don't like talking on Instagram and all this shit. When you see me, just keep the same energy. That's all I ask for. Even if it's like, hey, bro, like, I'm sorry for what I said. I'll appreciate that even more. Um, but I, I just don't like fake people. Like, that's just me. But yeah, the stabbing thing, bro, I've, I've overcome it. Um, we need to fucking, like, that shit needs to stop. I, I don't, I don't, in my city, there's no such thing as fucking stabbings, bro. Straight up. Like there's not, we have one-on-ones, we have cracks straight up. You have to have a fight, bro. Like if you've got a problem with someone, have a crack, go have a fucking drink at the bar with them after. Drill music, it has influenced it. This UK scene shit, it has influenced it, 100%. Like people can't sit there and say it hasn't, it fucking has, bro. 100, 150 cent, like these kids get influenced so easy on what we say. And it's hard because as an artist, you don't want to be a fake person and talk about shit that you're not doing because that's fake. You know, that's that's fake to you as a man, you know? So like, what do you like, what do you preach about? You know, mm. it's very hard. That is very, a, very hard one. That's a hard topic so in like, itself do you, because- do you, do you flip it? Do you flip it and say like, yeah, I was that person, but I don't want to be that person anymore. But I, how can you do that if you're still in the game? Exactly, yeah. That's exactly, it's a very hard yeah. one, man. Like it's a very, very like, that's yeah. It's fucking. It's 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 sad, but at the same time, it's like, it's it's literally a trap, bro. It's like it's literally a trap because you can't get anywhere with it. Um, and I feel like also with the drill thing, while we're talking about it, it will fade away, right? Give it a year or so, it doesn't be no more fucking drill. So the artists who are only on drill beats, they have to find something else. Um, if they want to make music and make it somewhere in music, they got to find something else to start jumping on. Um, 
If not, then maybe they're just using it as an outlet for like when it first started, it wasn't from the UK. Let's get that straight. This is from Chicago, bro. Like Drill was from Chicago. And that was just diss tracks to, to, to areas, just to just different gangs. That's what they were doing. Then the UK did the same thing. Um, and I feel like Aussie's trying to do the same thing when we don't even have to, bro. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, bro. I just hope for the best for the scene that everyone could actually come together because no one actually sees the bigger picture that if we do actually come together and fuck all this, like the drama is over nothing, like really. It, it, like the past, you can't change the past. And like, it goes, yeah, it goes really deep with this shit. Like, it, it, put it this way, right? My country at the moment, we went through apartheid, right? right? We came through all that shit, sort of. <laughs> Still racism everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, now the country is run by the blacks, you know, African people. They're trying to make the whites pay for the apartheid days. That's not what's supposed to be happening. You need a lady by example. We can't grow as a country if that's what's going to happen. We're going backwards, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I just feel like we need to come together um, and... Yeah, you, it, it'll, it'll blow Australia up to a whole different degree because I feel like we are there, we're next, man. Like it was the States, States has done. It was UK, UK has done up, Australia's next up. We have to be, bro. No, 100%. <clears throat> we have um, to be. But yeah, the influence on, on, on the music, man, is like, it's a bit hectic. Like this next EP is more, I don't know, there's more emotion in it talking about what's happening in my life and that's what it's always been like. I'm always talking about what's happening in my life, um, what I'm doing sometimes um and yeah that's that's the, when my best stuff comes out like i can never write something that's not me um so yeah it's it's yeah bro it's such a fucking hard topic that one man it like, is bro the, and like you can't really speak on behalf of too many people because that's the got thing their own that's the thing and like that's why i say that's why i say like how can you how can you preach something when you're still stuck in mm -hmm. the streets? It's, mm. it's, it's contradicting yourself. Um, and your homies will start turning on you there too. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that, that's a very hectic one, that one. Real hectic. Crazy but it's, story there, it's crazy how it's like, it's gone around though as well because it looked like it was first in Sydney and then it transferred over to Melbourne and then it was in Brizzy. Now it's a little bit in Adelaide and now it's in Perth a bit. Mm. But it's not areas. We don't have like no area beef there. It's just like... Cunts will get into a fight and can't get a blade straight away. There's no more like smash, boom, leave it all good. It's like cunts are carrying blades out, bro. Like cunts, not even blades, machetes, like straight out machetes in, in this the This is dax, happening bro. in Perth right now? Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah that's bro. that's too much. When bro. was it? Like maybe a couple of months ago, someone got hit in Northbridge with fucking machetes, chopped him, got chopped. See you later, dead, out the front of a club. That's crazy. Like, it's, yeah, it's pretty nuts, man. Yeah, people pretty, definitely pretty chill on that one, man. Oh, yeah. On, Fuck on. yeah. 100%. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> deep one, that yeah, one, man. Yeah, you took that deep. But hey, sometimes it needs to be no, said. No, it has bro. to be said, bro. We've got to uh, switch it up on a bit more of a positive note. <laughs> but before I go into actually, uh, uh, speaking of something else, I've seen you had a bit of an injury on our Instagram. Was it fucking, was it a bee sting, bro? Oh, bro, I, I thought you were going to gonna about... talk about the knife. Um, Fucking when I cut my finger, like almost cut my thumb off, bro. How'd you do that? Wait, <laughs> yeah. that so the bee sting, so... I was, bro, bro. All I remember is looking at Instagram for those listening, watching at home. It was a, you, you just panned the camera from nothing into your face and it looked like a helium balloon version of yourself, bro. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? Bro, bro, it was like the black avatar. Hey, it was pretty hectic. That was crazy. Um, so what happened there was uh, we were painting a day spot with one of the homies, a couple of the homies and fucking yeah. Um, I just felt like I could hear like, so I had dreads then, so like I, I, could, I could hear something going zzz, 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 like real loud, but not moving from that spot. Like it didn't sound like it was, I just heard it like fucking. So I went to one of the boys and I was like, bro, like fucking, is there something in my hair, cunt? And he just goes, oh no. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, bro, I was like, fuck's sake. And then, yeah, he looks at me, he's like, stay still. And he just goes to grab it. And as soon as he grabs it, bro, it just gives me bang, oh. one like one right here, bro. All good, keep painting. Fuck, man, like five minutes later, painting, I'm like, fuck, my head and my is feeling hell tight, bro. Like, it just feels like it's like <laughs> fucking like so tight, bro. And then um, I go to my mate and I'm like, bro, like, does something look a bit off here? And he just turns to me and he just goes, holy shit. Kind of. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? So I get my phone out, I look at it and I was like, wow. And, then, and this yeah, is where we impose like, a photo uh, of you. I will, no, I'll say, I was about to say, can you, can you yeah, do pop up? Sick, I'll send a photo of it. Um, and then I popped up, fucking, it was just like, man, swollen as fuck. So then I thought I was allergic. Mm. So then I started panicking a little bit because I was like, fuck, this is going to swell up. I'm a little bit out in the sticks. Mm. I don't have anything to, to think because I'm not allergic. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then, yeah, I went to the doctors and the doctors actually told me that I've got a bee allergy now. Okay. So apparently you can get allergies as you get older, which yeah. is fucking you can, whack, You can bro. lose them too, apparently. So oh. I went to the doctors for one of those allergy tests. Yeah, yeah. And they told me I'm allergic to peanuts. I'm like, I've been eating <laughs> peanut butter my whole life, bro. He's like, oh, well, just watch out. And Holy like, fuck. What do you mean? Just watch out. <laughs> yeah, like, anyway, apparently they come and go. How so you living, bro? Chilling. I'm just hanging out, yeah, I bro. think I was allergic when, when I first got it done. My mum always told me I was allergic to dust, so carpet. Mm. And we had carpet in our house all day. Me so too, like, bro. It, nothing was happening, but... Okay. So that was that was a myth. Anyway, bees crazy. Bro, the bees, bees was crazy. crazy. That as face fuck. was the funniest that was thing I've ever seen. All right, you, you, I'm sorry. Like, bro, that was, that was that was you, when you see this but photo, joy, I, I still, I still, I still, I still capitalized on it. I dropped a freestyle while I was fucked up like that. So all good. There you go. Hey. <laughs> Speaking about being out. Um, this thing, this thing, if anyone home can hear that, it's just the aircon going crazy, <laughs> hitting the graffiti, hitting a few walls, bro. Obviously, you were out with Posse Shot. You spoke about their show the other week. You hit hit a few walls with them afterwards. You got something done with them? Yeah, just a legal wall. Just a, a, a legal wall. Two words. Legal wall. Yeah, I thought you said a legal wall. Yeah, no, like, we did the right. youth centre there, which okay. was sick. Um, how did um, I, yeah, sorry, how do we link up? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no, no keep saying, your link with Posse Shot is all good. No, that's how all did right. your love of graffiti and music like, first come Fuck, together, bro? bro. Um, I moved here in 2008. Yeah. 2009 went like... 2008, I was going to the skate park and shit, right? So that's where it all starts. Ask yeah. Carney, he knows. It all starts at the skate park, bro. So I encourage all the kids to start going down to the skate park and go hang with your friends, man, because you meet the best people there. All my best mates, my day ones today, are all from the skate park, bro. Come on. Like every single one of them. But um, yeah, so my, my love for graffiti started, um, I always used to draw um, when I was back in South Africa, like 10 years old, 12 years old to 12. I was drawing a lot of like Mickey Mouse characters, just looking at it and drawing, not tracing, just looking and drawing. Mm. Um, and then I moved here, um, noticed a little bit of graffiti, uh, met my homie Dan at the skate park. And then, yeah, we started getting into a little bit of tagging and stuff like that, just some toy shit doing as you do. Then one of the homies, Dave, took me to a um, workshop at a youth centre and there was, shout out Wizard, he was down there in Shime as well and they were teaching kids how to, paint boards every Wednesday night. So we were going down there every Wednesday night, they supply paint, sausage sizzle, and you just paint a board, and then next time you come, you just get better every time. Um, then we started racking paint from them, and then um, started going <laughs> yeah, painting yeah, illegal, yeah. so it was all good. Um, and then, yeah, fucking, I just started get full love, and like, if you're, if you're a writer, you know for a fact it's like a drug, man. Like, mm. I still go out once a week, at least. Very, 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 very active. Like I have to be, as it is a very, very big outlet for me. Um, so yeah, came upon that, and then fucking just started just seeing it around. I guess, man, and I just fell in love with it, you know. And then met a lot of people who actually were in it as well, and then started doing stuff with them, getting better, learning stuff, and then just grew up, just kept painting and painting, and then I stopped for a bit. And then I think 2018 is when I started going very, very hard, and that's when I was like, all right, so I'm very pretty into it <laughs> pretty into this and now i use it as a, a big outlet man so like my missus knows that i can't not go painting once a week like at least once a week i have to go painting one one night a week i have to go out because it just takes away when when you're out there and it's just you and your piece that's all it is same with fishing same when i go fishing i don't smoke bud when i'm fishing i don't smoke bud when i'm painting it's just clear mind and it's just get away from everything. It's just like you're you're focusing on that and nothing else. You just get away from everything, you know? Um, so that also helps a lot when I used to get writer's block. I don't really get it that much anymore because I don't force myself to write. I just write when it feels right. Um, and yeah, the painting thing, like if, say for example, when I was trying to write so much um, and I was getting writer's block, I'd just go painting for a week straight, nonstop, just go hurt shit. And then the next week or so, boom, because I forgot about music, something new would just pop up, like just get sparked from it. Um, but yeah, it just popped up from that, man, and then going to the paint stores and meeting older dudes and then fucking, um, yeah, I think I met Muscles. Muscles, what show was it, man? I can't remember what show I ended up linking up with him. But he showed me around Melbourne the best and that's why, I, like, I've got so much love for those boys, bro. Like, those are, like, family. Those aren't, like, my mates. I won't consider them kind of as, like, music mates or anything. Like, those, are, those are homies, like, you know? Um, so yeah, met Muscles then and then he figured out that I was a writer and then that's when it got, the love even got more deeper because like writers got that sort of mutual respect um, and that code as well as a writer, if you know what I'm talking about, is um, is pretty deep. So they respected me for that, which was sick and I respected them for that as well. But I also knew Carney 
like, so the first um, 50-50 I went to, Carney rocked up at about that and I seen this bloke and I knew who he was. I knew it was the producer, but I've never met him before and I never wanted to go up. I was real shy. I've got the worst social anxiety, right? And then, um, yeah, fucking couple of years go down the line, boom, Carney spinning over the beats. Fucking we ended up doing a session at a house Denser. Shout out Denser. Um, a house that Denser was house sitting in fucking Carlton, I think it was. And it was a fucking beautiful house, man. And yeah, that was the first session I did with Posse Shot. Basically the first lodge meeting. And fucking we did six, I think six tracks in one day. Me, Has, Flea, fucking Posse Shot. And only we only dropped Wazzle out of that one. So mm. there's like five rare. That's a banger. Tracks Some five. Around. There's a fucking, I'll show you the unreleased one with me and Haz and Posse. It's fucking <laughs> empty, bro. But I love that everything we ask, the stories have such a good flowing effect. You've done a lot, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, bro, I'm so, trying my best, man. There's, there's so much out there, bro. Um, bro, recently, obviously, yourself from Perth. We've had mm-hmm. a bunch of Perth people. We're complete not long yeah, ago. Yeah, King. Um, we had Gucci smoothie the other yeah, day. Yeah, King. The other day we seen... Um, Flew and Inkaby, yeah. uh, South by Southwest, Mario Zay. Mm-hmm. Bro, you obviously seem to be someone who fucks with a lot of different artists, bro. Nah, especially 100%. from your home. What's it like on ground in Perth right now? Bro? Uh, oh, bro, we're popping. Yeah, we're popping. Yeah, we're popping. We've always been popping. It's just such a far side that um, people count us out. But now that people are learning to come here and make some noise, it's, it's a bit easy, you know, because I was the only one doing that um, on my my scale, like before draft. Like, no, not before, not, not before, like draft and shit. Like, not talking about those big boys. Mm-hmm. Um, like on my on my gen, I was the only one who was making that move to come over and make some noise here. Um, and when you do that, you get fucking a lot of lot of love, man. Put it this way: when I was fucking the whole Get Body tour went for a year, that whole little that little run thing, yeah. and it was thirty k followers in that year. I just boom like that. It was it was insane, man. Um, Sorry, what were you saying again with the question? I was just asking what it's like on ground. Oh, on ground in person. So yeah, no, bro. Everyone's working. Yeah. Everyone's working. And yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> It looks like every cunt's working in Sydney, but you get you no cunt's doing shit, bro. <laughs> straight up, straight up. I'm just gonna say it as yeah. it is, bro. Um, and yeah, no, nah, fucking Perth is popping at the moment, so keep your eyes on that. There's a lot of dope artists coming out of there. Um, Inca B, like you said, fucking prodigy coming out of there. Marley's doing his thing too. Um, we got Chiseco, Adrian Zuki, bro. There's so many diverse artists that are coming out of Perth. That is sick. So I'm fucking, I'm happy. And I'm everyone's happy. Made, like you said, everyone's making that trip now. So it's making oh, it yeah, look, as much as they bro, should have to to just there be was like on, but still. 10, maybe 10, oh, sorry, 10 or 12 artists from Perth uh, for Southwest here, which was fucking sick, bro, epic, bro. Which was dope. And like people are talking about it now as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can hear people talking, like when we were at the after party, people are talking like per- Perth's making noise. Perth's like, it's good to see, bro. It's good. I don't, I don't have to carry this fucking city on my back by myself anymore. Everyone's it's, it's following sick. it, bro. It's it's sick, everyone's bro. joining it's, it's him. Dope. It's dope. Bro, you've obviously also incorporated some Perth slang into some of your songs, oh, of bro. Of course, Dad. Come on. I hear, um, fuck, what am I trying to say? What are some key words that you've, you know, might get out there that people back here might be like, what's he talking about? So, yeah, that's the thing. Um, normally, our slang from Perth comes from the Noongar heritage. Um, mm-hmm. So, it's more of the Aboriginal slang. And like, you don't have Noongar tribe here. You don't have Noongar mob or Yamaji mob. That's what I learned when I first came here. It's Kuris, eh? Mm-hmm. So, you don't have the same slang. Okay. So, when I came here and I was saying, yeah, Dad, no, true zoo, all that stuff. No What's one. the second one? True zoo. You're going to have to help me out there. <laughs> so true zoo is like, say, for example, you tell me something and I don't believe you. I go, true zoo. Ah, uh, okay. And then you say, true is anything, gun. <laughs> that's like true zoo? Yeah, true zoo. Like true is who? Like you can say true zoo, true is who. That's just like swear true. mothers or first. Yeah, exactly, queens exactly. Say true gods. Exactly, like, exactly, true God. exactly. And then you go, hey. so I say, say true, true, is, true is who? And then you say, true is nan. And then oh. you've got to believe that then. If it's true is nan, then <laughs> you believe, you believe that. Come and on. that's why on Howdy, I watch almost stack up a million no like mm. cars. That's true as nan. Like it's the same, okay. the same slang. And like, I feel like no one is really besides the original boy shout out Iza shout out Yaza shout out all the boys out there making noise mm-hmm. out, b- besides out of them I'm the only one who's not actually black fella who's using the words and I'm mm-hmm. getting respected for it because I'm putting the boys on and like on. majority of my mates are Noongar as well you know and I've grown up around it so much that it's in my vocabulary so I can't help that I can't help it at all so I'm um, yeah, no, nah, fucking oh, hectic, straight bro. out. Before we move on from Perth at all, something I hear from you all the time on the tracks, bro, is free my plug, bro. Ah, free to Dark plug. Free OD cheese, General? free OD cheese, G- free cheese. Tell us yeah. a little bit about our boy, bro. Ah, uh, bro, if you know, you know, 100%. Yeah? Like, okay. fucking he, he, like, it sounds like, oh, yeah, free my plug as in, like, plug as in fucking, like, 
Agra is an app, but nah, bro, it's not. It's not plug for plug. It means plug for like he was the dude who was like getting artists to meet us. Mm -hmm. So he was the one who linked me with Cursor. He was the one who was linking me. He was the one who linked me the Vincent's feature. All right, let me listen to this shit, bro. Cheech, bro, like this cunt finds people before they're huge, right? So he found Vincent's out of nowhere, like out of nowhere, bro. Found allergic. I'm there doing what I'm doing and asking like, what? Like, he's like, bro, have you heard this cunt before? I'm like, nah. He tells me, shows me the song, and I'm like, bruz, I've never heard anything like this. Like, this is proper. Like, if, the way he's talking, it's it's proper. Um, so then I started getting intrigued. So I went on Vincent's Instagram, looked at his photos, and I was like, this cunt's with like fucking Albanians and shit. Like, oh, this is more interesting. So I reached out, and I was like, yo, fucking, um, love your music, bro. Like, um, do we do a track? And then yeah, boom, Russell Coit come from that. Banger. So the first Russell Coit, the original was actually, which is me and Vin. And then I come to Sydney and we were sitting in the apartment, me, Scam, Husky, Pompey, and Vinko and that. And I showed them the song. And then Husky was just like, not, I wanna, I, I gotta jump on this track now. Um, so we booked a session at Gunsters that day. I went and recorded the Russell Coit one. And then yeah, that's how that happened. Um, but the plug man, like he, like bro, the G, like he came on every tour, every single run he was there. Um, yeah, just just one of the real close homies, man. Like he was, he was a fan from from the start. Please. Like fucking, he was going to the Adelaide shows for like Menace and Curve and shit before I ever knew him. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, when we linked up, I uh, actually very genuine person. Uh, that's that's my little brother, that uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, soon home. Heck soon yeah. home, three more years. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, hey, not too long. Ah, bro, that's fucking one year down already. This thing went quick as oh, fuck, bro. On, bro. It's crazy, man. I can't believe the year's finished, bro. Man, like, I, is... I can't believe it's, what is it? It's nearly November, right? Yeah, yeah nearly that's birthday time. Fast yeah, year, bro. Should be good. Bro, speaking of people close to you, um, I have heard that you've lost some friends over the years or taken their own lives about, you know, it's different circumstances, right? How have you managed through that stuff, bro? Is that something you, you deal with with music? Because we hear a lot about that or is this, there's a whole new ball game to that for yourself? Bro? Um... Like I lost one of the homies recently, like in the last week. Shout out Hair Shress and oh, Pace okay. King. Um, that was like normally I don't really like react to it, bro. Mm -hmm. To be honest, but this one was a bit weird, man. Like fucking, and actually like because when he was he was one of the best skate, bro. There's a there's a yarn for ya. Baker came to do um a uh, uh, fucking a what's it called, bro? A demo. Oh, yeah. Came to do a demo at the local park, and Hair was like the king of skating around the area. And I'm um, also a good hustler, bro. Like, um, fucking Baker came there, mad demo, and then everyone was talking up Hesh. And I was like, fucking, Hesh was like, I'll do one trick, show up this whole demo. <laughs> like, literally. And then and that was like, what do you want from it? You're talking shit. He was like, put a carton on it, and I'll do one trick, show up the whole demo. And he just did one line, bro, showed this whole demo up, the whole the Baker boy, and not sponsored at all, bro. All the Baker boys were fucking loving him, man. Like, Oh, absolute G. But he was also the first rider I was seeing around my area, right? So that's why I respected him so much. I was, he was, his, 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 um, his pieces were everywhere. His tags were everywhere. So yeah, when I went out the other night to do a piece for him and like piece was cool, oh good. But when you put that RIP next to it, that one felt a bit like, whoa, like it's a bit heavy, you know? Um, especially when you've got kids and shit that you leave behind, man. It's fucking... Um, People say it's selfish, but you don't know what cunts are going through, bro, how, how long they've been fighting those demons for. And it's always the most happiest ones. That's, that's the scary part. You do like, hear that a lot, bro, which like is sad. The ones that are always looking after who's happy and making sure everyone's all right. It's always those people you got to look out for. So, yeah, look out for your friends for sure. Like, Facts, always, bro. always. Don't ever – and from, like even me, like if you're a fan and got some problems, um, yeah, I'm always here for a chat. Like always, always here for a chat. Come on. Um, but don't use that shit as a fucking, like, this is another thing, like, don't fucking use that suicidal thing as a fucking, as a card, you know what I mean? Like, cunts are saying, oh, I'm a suicidal person just to get some clout and fucking cry wolf, you know what I mean? I hate cunts that cry wolf with that suicidal shit because when it does happen and we could have been there to save it, it's a bit hectic, you know what I mean? So, yeah, nah, rest in peace to all the bros that passed, rest in peace to all the people that have passed that, are watching this and have loved ones who are passed through suicide as well. Um, do you have the blue trees here? The blue trees. Yeah, so in Perth, like what they've done at the moment is for, I think it's for men's mental health, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. They, um, every, some areas, they just like take all the leaves off of the tree and paint it blue. So it just, I feel like I've seen that somewhere before, but I don't know where, bro. Yeah, so it's just like a suicidal awareness okay. sort of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, but I feel like that should be also 
spoken about more in music as well and like even more shows like I'm pretty sure Enter Enter did one was it for a suicidal thing I'm pretty sure maybe I'm not too what was it a show a show I'm pretty sure they did like a suicidal oh. show or off no it was it for head. someone that passed away they did hey, it like but see something like that should yeah. should happen like where it's like fuck trying to chase a bag bro for one day mm. you know what I mean put something on for the community give back like give oh, back man. and like try help because that's when they're gonna love you more as well man like facts yeah it's 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 my my I put it this way man my um. My whole mindset of the whole blowing up thing and being the biggest rapper and that has changed in the last four years. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the hardest. I don't, don't none of that. Like, I'm happy just making a change on where I am right now. Like, and as long as I'm, as long as I'm eating, as long as the family's eating, I'm happy. I don't, I don't, I don't stress about fucking being in mansions and all that shit. I'm, I'm chilling, bro. And that's what this EP is about called. It's called Lavish. So, lavish, is, that yeah, the, is that the first the, time it's been mentioned? Yes, yes. Hey, yeah, take yeah, away yeah. exclusive <laughs> Lavish. Come on. So, yeah. Nah, Keen, bro. Nah, fucking Absolutely no. more than Fucking King no. Bro. 100%. So back on the music tip, uh, we spoke about uh, your years in the grime scene mm -hmm. a little bit before, but you were actually one of the first, if not the first Australian rapper I heard spitting on drill. So this would have been 2018 Taunts. with Taunsky. Uh, shout out Taunts. Shout out uh, Taunts. Don't care no more. This was, Shit. This was maybe... Uh, a, a year before the big drill explosion happened here. So what was it like recording that track? And then could you have ever predicted that drill would have been such an important sound for Australia? Yeah, you know, I, was just a couple I, later? I definitely knew it was going to be a big impact. That's why we jumped on it. Me and Taunts actually spoke about that. Um, taunt, bro, funny that you say that. Like that's the last person you think to be jumping on a drill beat, eh? Mm -hmm. But you, that's one of the first people that will fucking like, he will show you some crazy drill music. Like Taunts is a big drill fan, like OG drill, but like, but where it comes from for me is little fella in there, bro. Like he showed me like when he was young, man, fucking 16, 17, he's sitting at his computer just finding the most craziest artists. And these artists are now fucking the biggest in the UK now. Um, so yeah, it all came from that. And then when I made that song, um, yeah, I don't care no more. That was with Mika Beats as well, which is also one of the biggest producers in the UK for Drill. Like T is very, very up there with M1. Um, they got the whole brigade thing. Um, so yeah, that did that. And then, yeah, it was just like a year too early, I guess, eh? Um, so yeah, no, nah, it, was, it, was, it was just cool to try. Fucking bang over track. I actually listened to it the other day on SoundCloud. Um, but yeah, that was a, that was a fuck. I full forgot about that one. Eh? The, the I don't care no more. That's Come why. On, I, yeah, 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 real <laughs> dig that one out Digging hard out. out, bro. But yeah, shout out Torns for that one, man. It was um, yeah, Defs knew that Drill was gonna make a change here, like because I already seen that Australia was doing what the UK was, and I caught on from that with the the grime thing, right? And it's happening now. If you look, if you look, if you look real close, real real close, look at these fifty cent type beats that are getting used. You know what I mean? And then look what's getting used here now. Mm. So it's just all copycat shit. Um, well, I feel like we don't need to anymore because we've got our own style. Australia is its own thing and we can actually show people that we can showcase something different and bring something different where people copy us. That's what we want. And we got mm. so many beast producers here right now. Bro, man. don't yeah. even get me fucking started on that shit, man. Like, It's killer because like last year I've been working on um, and building like my own team. So shout out the 333 boys, shout out the All Breed boys as well. Um, so that's like J. Kel on um, mixing and mastering as well. Um, shout out Chunky Love for mastering everything as well. He's a fucking goat. The goat. Um, I thought you meant the other Chunky. For nah, example. nah, <laughs> fuck. Can you imagine Chunky mastering my tunes, bro? <laughs> Nothing will get done, bro. We'll just be partying. <laughs> shout out Chunks, bro. I love you, brother. Um, yeah, nah, uh, the fucking, the team's been good, bro. Like, and everyone's in for the same same image, which is sick. Like. If you've looked at the last couple videos as well, so from Decency, I started shooting videos with my own team. So like it was Leafy and Boise and Vinco. And we just, yeah, we just rent the stuff out and shoot ourselves. I'm half directing it myself as well. So Decency, Rumors, Stop Look and Listen have all been, yeah, my own team, which has been sick. But this next one with Slip and that, I was just like, all right. How you, I, oh, bro, my plan this year basically was, Drop singles every month, get my name back out there because that's what I had to do. Because I, I I made a I made a big mistake and I learned my lesson by going in the blackout tour with big venues, right? After straight after COVID, I thought that I had my fan base still there, which I didn't. All good, learned my lesson, sweet as. So what I thought was I'll drop all these singles this year, um, build my name back up, and everything will come with. Nothing was happening, nothing was happening, nothing was happening. Three months left of the year, boom, tours, shows, boom, everything's happening now. So my plan's working. Always, always trust the process, bro. Um, and then now I'm lining myself up for another EP. 
So yeah, it should be very interesting to see where it goes from here. But I feel like it's yeah, I'm, I'm getting a chance to run it back as COVID did put a hold on my career. Um, as I did leave the label, thinking that I could do stuff independent now. Um, no respect to, no disrespect to fucking Golden Era at all. I was actually looking to do another deal with them, um, just because I love it's such a good label. But I want to do a boom bap thing with them, you know. So um, yeah, independent went that route. COVID hit pump the brakes on blackout and yeah just thought i had to run it back now so that's what we're doing bro it's just fucking keeping active and shit's happening let's so, go yeah the sure. moves are yeah coming up real, real fast bro real fast yeah okay. and um so after don't care no more a year later you dropped you know one of the best australian drill tracks i think to come out of the country in that whole boom which was russell coit you mentioned a bit before yes sir you mentioned the link up with vincent's happened but i did hear that there was actually a potential link up with the actual Oh, fucking hell, bro. Yes. <laughs> Who was it, man? Um, One of the producers, shout out to you, bro. I know I can't think of my name, oh, your name over the top of my head, but you messaged me, the producer messaged me saying, yo, I have got fucking Russell Coy here <laughs> and like I've got the link for him and I'm going to send you, he's going to send you, he's, he's heard the song and he's going to send you a voice message. I was like, fuck off, can't, no way. <laughs> bro, I swear to God the next day. Russell Coy is like, hey, go, mate. I got the voice <laughs> message, bro. No shit. So he wanted us to go Kadanara, and that's when like COVID hit a little bit too, fucking thing. Uh, so we're going to try to do a regional tour mm. and then get him involved in it, right? Um, and then do a rec because he was like, oh, why don't we get on a little drill, gr um, drill um, country remix? And I was like, fuck yeah, that would have been sick, bro. Would. So um, yeah, that didn't happen, which is all good. He's still doing his thing. So when I see him on TV, I'm like, hey, that's Russell Coy. It's all good. That's my guy. It's, it's the homie. It's the homie. Um, but so yeah, the link nah, was almost there. The link, the link, link was there. Nah, the hundred percent was there. I, I will, bro, we'll play the fucking. We'll play. I'll show you the the um the voice recording after. Hectic. It's cramps, bro. It's so good. Bro, yeah. Hey, Mr. Coit, if you're watching, it's not too late for the link up, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, it's, it's <laughs> never too late. It's never too late. I'm still <laughs> dancing in the sand over here with my fucking Akuba hat, bro. We can go. <laughs> Let's do it. Bro, uh, you recently jumped on a track with 360. That was like recently, like as recent, like yesterday. Like, like recently, recently. I'm yeah. talking like 24 hours recently. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like recent as. You've also toured with the Hilltop Hoods in the past, bro. Yes, you've done your thing with them. You obviously paid homage to the artists that have come before you. There's yeah. no doubt about that, bro. Um, having moved here from South Africa, when did you say? 2008? 2008, yeah. What was your first taste of Australian hip hop, bro? Uh, Hilltop Hoods, Nosebleed Section. Um, that was like, fuck yeah, this is dope. And then just straight into the most raw shit ever, bro. It was lyrical commission. True. And that's <laughs> when I, that's when I was like, Phew. but do you do you see that? Like an African kid coming from South Africa loving fucking Aussie hip hop Heck so much. Yeah. But not just Aussie hip hop, LC. Like, like the most Aussie. Like the most Aussie train and like to, shit. bro, to <laughs> me, that shit sounds so hectic. Shout out Brutal. So there's this down underground cyphers thing at the moment that they're doing in Melbourne mm. and they're just showcasing some Melbourne artists and Melbourne has got that fucking style, right? So shout out Brutal. This is one fucking freestyle on there and Nosty as well. Those freestyles are there under some banging beats, but it's so Melbourne and it just reminds me of those type of days, you know? Um, but yeah, fuck bro. The, um, it's, it's just weird to, 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 to think that that, I'm from a different country and then come here and then that's what I find the love for. But my homie Marshy, who actually gave me the name Shadow, mm -hmm. um, we were going to school together, skate park thing as well. And he first showed me Big L and then moved me on to a lyrical commission. And then I started digging myself because I love finding my shit out myself. And if I've, if I've got interest in something, I end up studying like the history of it, you know, because I don't like being a clueless cunt. Um, so yeah, no, nah, the fucking, it was, it was real dope. It was real dope like that. They were the first introduction and then 10, 10 years later, I'm on tour with these cunts like, what the fuck, right. you know? And for those who didn't know as well, I got offered the 50 shows um, over in South America, but I couldn't get it because of my, um, didn't have my citizenship. So, so you would have 50 like, shows throughout what? South America? Damn. Wow. What, what, Straight what after. couldn't you get? My passport. Oh, you didn't have my it? My embassy was, no, the South African embassy is fucked. So it would take oh. me like a very, very long time to get it. And my citizenship was only in the January. Oh. So I could, it was no, oh. no, no chance of getting it, which is all good because in my eyes, the way I see it, bro, is I got there before, I can get there again. 100%. And I feel like that's happening at the moment. So it's good. It's really oh, good. I got I'm two parts it. coming off this then, bro. What, what did you learn by working and touring with people like the Hoods, bro? Is, Fuck, man. Or is there anything you learned? <laughs> Come on. A lot, a lot, a lot. Number one, those kinds of fucking weapons. Mm. Like, phew, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, 
they're not stages, man. Those are fucking like track meets. <laughs> like you're yeah. running, bro. Like insane, insane. Like from coming to a stage the size of the, the sound panels, bro, to a stage that's fucking almost fucking a hundred meters long, bro. You know, it's it's very insane. You got to work the crowd. Actually, I'm lying, bro. It's a lot easier to work a bigger crowd. Mm -hmm. Lot easier to work a bigger crowd. Like fucking piece of piss. <laughs> when there's a lot of people, it's fucking piece of piss. They don't. They don't give a fuck about what you're saying. When there's five people in that room, bar, very easy. Every word very up. very hard to fucking get mm -hmm. that one going. But what I learned was keep the same energy no matter where you play. So that 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 <laughs> that said, like fucking one weekend playing fifteen thousand people. The next weekend playing Slims, I'm not going to say which artist, fuck you anyway, uh, but um, playing that fucking thing and it was literally playing to my family, like mm. my brother, my missus, fucking J.K.L. and Vinko. But it's, yeah, I'll tell you who the artist is after and you're going to laugh, bro, like proper. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll wait for that one. <laughs> yeah, wait for that one. I don't think he's around these days. Okay. doesn't look like, but yeah, it's funny as fuck, bro. Um, but yeah, nah. What was the question? I was just saying, what did you learn? But obviously, yeah, you no, learned, I learned, keep the learned, same learned energy, that, bro. Learned the same energy. Um, I learned to be on time a lot more. Mm. Um, I learned fucking, I learned time management is a big thing. I learned crowd control a lot more. I learned a lot of things, bro. I learned, that was my step into the industry. And that's the reason why I took that golden era deal. Mm -hmm. I did not take no deal for money. I took it to get my foot in the door. And that is, it worked. Beautiful, like, bro. Like, all these chances I've been taking have been good. So I just go with my gut feeling. And if it works, it works, bro. If it doesn't, run another thing up. So all good. you can do. 100%. Obviously, just mentioning before we talked about you coming over from South Africa, bro. Mm -hmm. Take us through what it was like coming here. Because how old were you? You came here? 12. 12. 12 yeah. Was it a bit of a culture shock or were you too young to really take nah, that all in, bro? Not really a culture nah. shock. Um, yeah, culture shock is in a respect version of like um, Australians, like no offense, um, Australians to their parents. Mm -hmm. Um where my family, like you would know as well, is an Asian culture is like very, very, very strict, right? So when we, I had mates come into my house, just walk straight through my house, don't greet my mate, my mum or my dad, or they swearing their mum and their dads, but oh, fuck, <laughs> cunt, like, bro. Mm. When I first seen my my mate of twelve years old swear his mum, I was like, it's over, like this, this kind of like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's done, bro. It is yeah. done. So it was very, very strict, but I also feel like Australia did make my parents a lot more lenient and they also seen like, you know what, it's not as hectic here as home, so I don't have to be as hard, but the drugs and stuff like that here is a lot more easier. Like meth is a very easy drug to get onto mm. in Australia, um, especially Perth. I got on that shit when I was 16, bro. I was smoking gear before I was smoking buds and smoking and doing any, any other, th anything, you know? Jeez, um, and yeah, that's what yeah. fucked me up with the whole grime stuff before that, that was that, was that drug. So I was in that headspace for a while. Um, and when you get grabbed by that shit, man, like you, it takes a lot to get out of there. If you don't get out of there quick, it's over with. 16 over is with. a crazy age to be getting into bro, it Bro, like well, put bro. it this way, it was easy to find bags of gear, to find bags of weed these, like in Perth. It's fucking, it's, it's, it's intense. And um, yeah, so that has a big impact. So my parents were a little bit like they seen that. They seen that I was coming home, not sleeping, getting very fucking, very, 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 very grumpy for no reason. And um, I was just in denial the whole time mm. until one time I got kicked out of home and I was out of home for like three weeks or so, living in my car and shit. Um, and that's when I snapped out of it. Like my dad messaged I thought they hated me. Then my dad messaged me out of nowhere saying, come home, son. And I was just like, fuck. You know. That's it. After that, boom, hung up the gloves for a bit and fucking, yeah, done, done partying. Like, I'm scared of fighting now, bro. I'm scared. I used to fucking, I used to go out and eat fucking easily, what's in the ball, bro? Easily 30 caps of Molly, easily, and go to fucking listen out after party. Scan oh my God. day, like busted as fuck, bro. Trust me, like I was fucked up. And then I'm scared of it now. I'm so, I, I look back at it, I'm like, how the fuck did I do that? Like it's insane, man. That, that scaredness is also a good thing to have because oh, it, stops, 100%, it bro. stops you from going, oh, look, I'm nah, getting a bit like, older, I probably well, shouldn't. Well, see, the thing is with me, Wings, as well, bro, is like I don't, when it comes to this shit here where I'm touring and stuff, this is not party for me. I'm working, mm. right? This is my job. It's not me fucking get fucked up to post fucking Instagram. It's my job. I take this shit very, very seriously. Um, so when I was on the Hilltop tour and some cunt was pressuring me to get fucked up, you know who you are. Um, yeah, and I just didn't want to because I was on the biggest tour of my life. I got called a bitch for it and everything, right? All good. But I was like, all right, sweet as. Are you coming to Perth show? He said, yeah. I said, no worries. I'll see you then. We'll party then. It's the last show. Hometown. And then, yeah, he doesn't like me after that show. <laughs> I think I cooked him. <laughs> <laughs> Not medium rare. Well done. <laughs> Proper. 
but yeah, I can party when I want to, but I just don't because I know that headspace I get into, the come downs, all that shit is fucking. Uh, I don't, I don't. I, that's not my. I've done it, and I'm glad I done it when I was young. I'm um, very young because now it's out of my system. Um, and yeah, it's also like when you have siblings as well, you see it also f- jumping off onto them. So like, goes onto my brother, he starts doing the same shit, mm-hmm. and then fucking when it happens like that, you go harder on them then they start going harder. They start resenting you. So you just got to let him be. Boom, let him be. He snapped out of it. He's doing his thing now. Sober. Loving it, bro. So on, bro. couldn't be many more prouder than anything. So it's been good, man. Like life's been been very, very crazy. Like, man, I fucking every single day, Wings, man, like I'm driving and I wig the fuck out. Like I wig out so hard, bro. I'm like, I'm literally driving in another country with my own car, white misses. Like, what the fuck do you mean, bro? <laughs> what do you mean? Cause like, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, di- I didn't see myself having a car in South Africa. I didn't even see that life going that far. Mm. You couldn't see that far cause there was no, nothing to look forward to. Um, just the next day really. Um, I have heard it's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. You, and you don't time. notice that until you're out there, bro. Okay. Like fucking so when I was there, pfft, it's home bro, chill. Like now I'm like, what the fuck can mm. How the fuck do you live like that? It's mm. insane. Um, but yeah, we 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 are chilling, bro. Everyone's happy. Um, yeah, like just the, the the gear. Like fucking, if I got one message to the kids, bro, is like stay away from the gear. Like one thing, just stay away from the gear. Like party with your mates, but but just stay away from the gear. Whatever you do, and if you've got mates that are trying to fucking influence it, like keep your head strong. Don't worry if they call you weak cunt, all of this shit, because you're not. You're like you're the strongest person in that room for saying no, hundred percent. Let's go. Yeah, important Good message. message. Good message. So taking it back to being on tour with the Hoods, uh, looking back at the history of hip hop in this country, you you said you're like you're someone who likes to you know study on the history of stuff. So mm-hmm. who would you say are the most important and crucial artists to hip hop that have kind of eventuated with like this scene today? Hoods, mm-hmm. Hoods for Fair sure. Ones. They, if you you know them, so you know like there's no one that disrespects them. They've got love for everyone. They know about everyone. That's the scary thing, right? These dudes are so fucking massive, right? But they still take their time to see what's going on in the scene. So when I first met them, it was after, like I said, I got the worst social anxiety. So they told me to come through to the Eminem show. I said, fuck that. <laughs> Made some dumb excuse up. And then they were like, all right, well, we're going to the Trade Wings um, Hotel, which was in Frio. And my missus was living in Frio at the time, just around the corner. So they said, we're going to the Trade Wings, having a couple of drinks. And Adrian Eagle, shout out you, my brother. Hope you're well. Adrian Eagle hit me up and he was like, yo, come through, catch up. So I was like, sweet as, I'm still so nervous. Then I was like bailing last minute. I was like, nah, fuck this. And my missus was like, just go, just go. Have like, ended up fucking staying there until five o'clock in the morning, just drinking with suffering pressure and Adrian. But I think it, it wigged me out when they were asking me, how's AJ? Like saying, my missus' name, asking family members' names and stuff, but they've never met me before. Like, you know what I mean? So it was cool to see them interested in stuff like that. And then um, when we got talking and then they realised how much I knew about Australian hip-hop and actual hip-hop and how deep my knowledge for actual mm-hmm. hip-hop went, that's when pressure was like, fuck, like he was a bit gobsmacked, like you're fucking actually onto it. Um, like mid, he's trying to tell me stories and like the mid story, I'm telling him the same story. And he's like, how the fuck do you know that when you're this young? Um, it's because I've studied my history, which some people don't do these days. Um, but yeah, like, I feel like they're, they're the ones, man, like who fucking, it's not no gatekeeping shit with them either. Like that's how I feel. It's never. And if, yeah, they just show love to everyone. Um, Everyone, there's a few heads in the scene that are that are good for the scene in different or kings in the scene for different ways, right? So let me just I'll try to break it down a little bit if that's all right. Um, so hoods would be just the kings of everything, right? They appreciate everything. They they're the kings of Oz hip hop. You've got Cursor, who is the king because he done it without anything, right? So for those people who are coming up like us that don't have no labels behind us or anything, no triple like I don't triple don't fuck with me. So like those sort of people. He's making it possible for us to be like, we can still do this, right? Mm-hmm. You've got people like Chill for the new gen. He's showing people it's possible to do it these days, right? He opened up that door to fucking link up people and do bigger stuff. Um, and he's also showed people that it's also okay to be yourself and people like that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else that I can see as fucking big, big heads in this scene. Sorry if I missed everyone. This is a hard question, but um, off the top of the bat, I feel like those those people... Um, are the ones that I would say 
carry the forefront of Australia. Even though like me and Chill had that beef and shit, I, I still respect what the fuck he's done for the scene. You know, you know what I mean? Like those waters, those bridges have been burnt. Like we're, we're chilling now. Like it's, it's, it's all good. Like, waters under the bridge, not those bridges have been burnt. Waters <laughs> under the bridge. Sorry, bros. Blockberry's got me smashed. Um, those, those bridges. Water's under the bridge with that now, so there might be like, there's, he wants to do a school high too as Come well. On. You know? Come on. Um, so yeah, no, nah, it's fucking, yeah, everyone's, it feels like the torch has always been passed, mm -hmm. um, but then I also feel like there's a lot of gatekeeping in the scene as well. Um, and I always, like from an outside of view, it looks like shit gets handed to people who are on certain labels and it's just the same, the same sort of run. If you're not in that purple circle, you don't get that, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I feel like, you guys have a platform to push that. Oh, no, let me, let me just put another thing. You guys as well are very important to this scene because you guys are pushing something that a label could push if they wanted to and make some coin off it, but you aren't, you're doing it for the love. Mm. So that alone, we've got that platform that people go look at, like, what's dropped today? All right, let's go take flight on Monday. We'll see what's dropped for the week. You know what I mean? My guy. If, if bro, <coughs> body bag could have been that person. You know what I mean? For sure. And I told Vinco, I was like, man, there's a spot right now. When body bag died down, I was like, bro, there's a spot right now for people to jump, like make a fucking a channel where people, like a hub basically. There's a perfect time to take that spot and you've done it, bro, and it's perfect, bro. So big up for that. Oh my God, thank you. And, um, and I appreciate that you have kept it G as well. There's no fake shit. It's not like, there's, you can just tell it's authentic, bro. I, don't, I fucks with that. I appreciate that. Well, bro. I hope it's authentic. No, it's fucking. I hope so, bro. <laughs> it's, it's fucking hard out here, bro. There's a lot of artists around the country now. So obviously you can't make every single person in one nah, country happy, but I try my hardest to stay nah, across a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of everything. But, 100%. And yeah. I appreciate like as well, like if there's someone that we know that's popping, that's aren't giving love and like I'll mention it to you and you shout them out, I really appreciate that shit, bro. Because from, from for us, in Perth, it's the hardest. Like, it's the, it's the hardest. Rolls reverse, do a rolls reverse for like two years, bro. These cunts go fuck off to Perth in Sydney, Melbourne, right. Brizzy, and we come here, see who makes more noise. Like, it's, 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 it's oh, and I spoke about this on Cater as well. It'd be fucking dope to get an East Meet West um, tape. Like fucking everyone, tape. yeah, a mixed tape. Oh, so tape, it's like, yeah, yeah full tape yeah, yeah. would be fucking dope. Um, I've been thinking, it's been playing in my head so much, bro. I would love to do another Get Bodied, man, but it would have to be a festival now. Mm. You know would. what I mean? It'd have to be big. It'd be, have to It'd be, be a, a lot of things into it, a, Ooh, lot, yeah. a lot of things to get it together. But Oh, yeah, it could it could happen as long as everyone, like the way I would go into it, I feel like I could be the person to do it as well. Is mm -hmm. Everyone's just there for the same thing. It's not, it's not about the coin. We just want to show these people that this is Oz, this is what we do, and the shit will come from there. We don't need this fucking big festivals and big headliners flying over this kind for the fifth time of the year in Australia, bro. Like fucking, we've got so much talent here to do a massive Australian festival. And do you remember Sprung? Mm -hmm. mm. Like I didn't, yeah, man, like I had a homie, shout out Halftime. He was like, he, so Halftime was the first person in Perth who was actually coming over here in my like circle and doing shit and doing big videos. So he was the one who made me step up my game. Um, so when he went over for Sprung, he won that competition. And then he went over again and that's when he met like Wiz of Oz and everything like that. And he was like, bro, this is nuts. Like fun cause is playing. And I was like, can't, I wish I could be there right now. <laughs> um, so we need something like that again, I feel like, because the, we're so diverse as a country with artists that there's a piece of the pie for everyone now. 100%. Yeah. But like you said, it, <clears throat> it does come down to a lot of things, especially the oh, money, money, money thing. Money the, thing yeah, gets these, in the way. These it's, days, it's fucking it's it's bullshit, hard, man. It's, it's, very it's fair, fair enough. Everyone's got to eat. But, um, Facts. There's no reason to be greedy. Mm. You know what I mean? There's enough pie to go around for everyone, bro. And um, just imagine the energy at this festival, bro. Cuz. You know what I mean? I was at Promised Land the other day and backstage felt like that because there's so many- Aussie artists. So many Aussie artists. Just, mm. I felt that vibe. Obviously, not there's not there's so many more scenes that could be put into yeah, that vibe. And obviously, Promised Land have a certain- No, cer definitely. Certain but, but it's somewhere. But if, if it's they, somewhere. If you but could like, do that, yeah. It's just somewhere. But like, if you looked at it, there was how many artists were on that Promised Land? Um, Line up that with new Aussie artists a lot, bro. Yeah, yeah a I'm lot, sure. which is good. So it's getting somewhere now where people are actually getting those bookings. But to me, excuse me, it looks like it's the same people who are getting those bookings. So it looks like it's a bit gate kept. Okay. And then when you see these shows, to me, these kinds don't deserve that big of a stage. They haven't paid their dues yet to get on that stage. Well, that's just because I'm a little bit old school. Like I've played thousands of shows yeah. now, bro. So I've worked my way up there. But yeah, like a stage like that, you want to bring your fucking A game. Like you want to put on a show. These cunts aren't doing that. 
Um, so yeah, if I yeah, I would love to fucking get into like the if all hell fails, bro, I'll be a fucking I'll be a, an event planner, bro, and I'll be throwing some crazy festivals. I'll be there to help you, bro. A hundred percent for if, sure, if for sure, hundred percent, bro. We're on for sure. Oh. But I just reckon an Australian on all Australian hip hop festival should happen. Um, even if it's like two thousand cap, three thousand cap, bro, it'll be fucking nuts, man. Mm, it'll be nuts. You could have graph, you could have kind of painting, everything, man. It'll be it'll it, it could work. It will work. Just the time will come. The time, like, 100%. give it one more year, bro. I reckon it'll be perfect for it. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, whoever, mark my words right now, whoever jumps on that first is going to be a millionaire. Watch. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Yeah, who's it going to be? I'm coming <laughs> for it, bro. No, I can't. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so we've spoken about the hoods, uh, LC360, um, the OGs of the game. So conversely, who are some up and comers that you think that everyone in Australia should be onto? Right now? Yeah, right now. So as a co sign? Yeah, yeah, let's Ooh, hit it with the co-sign. Go Marley so Jose, that's fucking very, very talented dudes. Um, him and Oscar, like very, very talented. Um, bro, AR the Eternal, is that is that? Yes. Bro, yes. fucking love that. He's a Beast. G. Beast, bro. Beast? What the actual fuck? <laughs> Have what you met up with fuck? him now? No, 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 no. Tracks coming. Tracks yeah. coming. He's got something for oh, me. Yeah, we supposed to organize a session there. That was exclusive. AR, yeah. Shadow, come Shout on. Shout out AR, bro. I fucking love for him. And there's another big homie that jumped up with him as well. Is it... Um, Renzo Mac or Renzo MCK, Renzo, bro. Yes, Renzo. Renzo. That's come the on, one. Bro. He's dope. My bad. And um, Perry, I just heard some fucking unreleased stuff from... Um, Perry, Perry P from Perth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, I haven't heard from him in a little dude, bit. Dude, like he went, he come over here and made a few tracks with some big people and- Awesome. Yeah, get prepared for Perry shit as well. So um, yeah, fuck man. There's so many fucking, and also Fracture, bro. Watch yeah. for what Fracture's about to drop, boy. That's gonna be hectic. Come on. That's gonna be hectic. But young cunts, man, like there's so many these days. Um, Lee, Lee for sure. I think he's gonna be a star. Um, yeah, that'll be about it, bro. I, I don't really, I don't really keep, the only things I see is on Take Flight and that, so I'll just watch that. <laughs> you heard him, um, uh, tune in with Take Flight, like Shadow, my man, guy, bro. AR, my bro, guy. that fucking, that AR, uh, that um, I stay with a buzz ever since boy then was playing in parks. Like that was just like insane to me. Like that, and that's real rap. You see what I mean? Bars, mm. bars, That's bro. a good list of artists, And that's bro. why I fucking respect that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else, man, like, yeah, shout out everyone doing their thing, man. Like, but like, no, really. I feel like the people as well. They've been trying to fuck. I shouldn't really say this, but I feel like it's been. Um, it's more of a, a selling p- point now after Leroy, where it's like, let's just try find a kid and, you know, mm. put them out there and do this. Um, and I feel like that there can also fuck the kids' com- um career up as well. Being so young, not knowing what's going on, being thrown in so many different places, um and not knowing if these people are in it for the right reasons for you, it could really fuck their career up. Um, so yeah, uh, for me, my advice to these kids, bro, is like if you're making music and making noise, just keep doing your thing. Don't, don't, don't sign, don't do nothing. The time will come, you'll feel it when it feels right. If it feels shady, it's shady, 100%. Um, and yeah, just, just, bro, the whole Australian music scene is going off, like proper, proper going off. I can't believe like how far it's come. Um, and also, it also starts getting like oversaturated with the same shit. And then next, the next week, boom, something fresh is coming. Oh, bro, how can I forget? Shout out Dibs. Holy fuck, bro. Aye, aye, aye. Holy fuck. Big love for Dibs. Come Big on. up Dibs. Um, and before, before, before I met Dibs through, Dibs was actually there when I recorded Russell Coit and JV was there too. Shout out JV. Mm. He was a really good artist. I don't know where he is at the moment these days. Hope you're well, bro. But he was fucking really, really good as well. Young, talented artist. Um, yeah, so yeah, Dibs fucking fresh, bro. Dibs is killing it. Um, yeah, shout out everyone, man. Shout out everyone that's making noise in Australia. Let's at the go, moment. bro. That's fucking a fresh, that's a good bro. cosign, bro. Nah. <laughs> All right, bro. To wrap it up, what what we got coming next, bro? Obviously, you got uh, the EP sorry. on the way. So you can expect that satisfaction single coming. Um, satisfaction at the end of this month. So after the Unknown T tour, I'll be dropping the satisfaction single. Let's go. And then after that, I'll be dropping a single called Busy. And that's more of these 50 cent type beats, but I'm going to show you how to actually do it properly. <laughs> well, I'm um, ready to like, hear I'm it, to be you, honest, bro. That's going to no, slap. This ain't no and we. This is like a proper banger. Like, this is like, oh. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not going to lie, but I thought and yeah. was a fucking yeah, banger wait myself. Wait for this. Yeah, I Wait for this. Bro. Wait for this. Yeah? I'll show you. I'll I'm show you that bro. plus. I'm and so I got busy. And these are just throwaways. Like, these aren't even like my. And that's the end of the year. Yeah, so this is the end of the year. This is the end of the year. So drop those two for the end of the year. Um, mixtape madness. I don't know when that's coming out. Don't know when this is coming out either. Um, and fucking, 
yeah, first first um, single of the EP will be early next year. I don't have a date yet, but I'm aiming to be hopefully February, January to drop the first single mm -hmm. and then the EP drop in March um, and then hopefully tour it a couple. Work rate is going crazy Yeah, slowly, from here slowly, slowly out, by steady. But I'm working on two EPs at once at the same time. So as soon as this one's done, I've got another one to drop straight away. So Totally different but, vibes? Yes, put it this way, blackout on steroids. Hectic. So we're like, <laughs> like yeah, very, very like um, melodic, but on a bigger level now, awesome, which is good. Man. So right, yeah, man. it's it's cool. I, I feel like I've done well where we're going to do the blackout thing because now I've got two fan bases I need to cater to, you know what I mean? You've um, done both. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I need to say. So yeah, now I'm trying to, do, trying to do it. Like, so now I've just got to keep switching them back and forth. But if I can do two EPs a year and keep those both those fan bases happy and then do one show or two shows a year, get them both in one room, I'm laughing. Growth, bro, bro growth. You know like, what I mean? Yeah, there's that 30K you got made in that year. That's Let's the do it one, again. Bro, 100%. All right, bro. I appreciate you coming through. Nah, fuck. Appreciate Come on, bro. It was a good chat. I'm up. glad to Sickest spend a bit cunts. more time with you. Every time I see you, it's Jeez. real quick. Yeah, real quick. <laughs> yeah, we've got another quick. couple of days together now. No, right. Definitely. It's your boy Wings, 24 karat Kevin Shadows. Take flight. We out, bro.